I'm Scott McKay. Hey, what's up? I'm Rhino. We're here to show you a project today. We're going to do a snowboard using Createx Candy 2.0 products along with their sealers, the 40-30-40-20 additives, and the new La Rouge, La Rouge. waterboard tape from FBS and also yep. the gold mask. Along with the gold mask and show you how it all works together. I'll take it to you step by step. Okay, Scott and I got the uh, snowboard in the booth. We got it prepped. We got to sand it with 400 grits, sandpaper, degreased down to get rid of all the contaminants. We have no future issues with our project here on out. Right. So what I got here is I got the Audubon Silver Sealer by Createx mixed with some 40-12, 10% ratio to get a nice flow. If you're in a more humid or hot environment, you can go to the 40-20, uh, which is the, the solvent-based one if you need that extra kick, but it's not really necessary in most cases. And remember, this is a non-catalyzed product. It's air-activated and you get a perfect flow on this. So you don't need the 4030 in here and the Autoborn sealers, which is great. So I'm gonna let you get to work. I'm gonna kick the booth on. It only takes one person to spray a snowboard anyway. Right, we're gonna tack it off, always tack before you spray, and we're gonna get to it. Okay, we've got two coats on this thing. It's already got pre-existing body work done to it, so we put a high build primer on here already. So only two coats was needed to cover this up. But you right. can add three or four coats to it if you want to get rid of some of the scratch builds or some of the some of the stuff you do for sanding. sanding. Yeah. Right. So two coats, let this thing dry, and now it's now we're gonna go to a coarse metallic. The nice thing about using a silver sealer here is you don't need to put four or five coats of silver metallic or silver down to get that coverage. It's already a silver tone two coats of the coarse silver and we're ready to go and we talk about that numerous times as always you get, get your sealer to your base color which yeah. makes it a lot easier so less time mm -hmm. save some money and less film thickness so when you go to clearing you don't have this thick thick edge of metallic and silver is built up so keeping it thin keeping it thin win-win yep get to work All right, we got the board all base coated. We ended up using the coarse aluminum metallic. Which about, laid down awesome, by the way. Yeah, laid out great. We great. added 30% of the 40-30 and about 5% of maybe a little more of the 40-12 just to get it to lay out nice. You could spray the coarse in the base colors without the 40-30, but the 40-30 just helps it lay out, dries really, really nice, helps the uh, flake to hold together so it's not migrating as yes. it's drying. Lay down perfectly like a nice, nice coarse metallic effect that we wanted to get, so perfect. Yep. Two coats, it lays down nice and smooth, flashed out night. We gave it about an hour and a half or so before yep. we started taping graphics to it. And uh, while we were doing that, we were designing this this kind of graphic idea, we're going to apply it. So you definitely want to wait, wait your time and let, let it dry thoroughly before you start sticking any of this uh, the tapes down so you, you won't have any adhesion problems down the road. Right, so, you don't want to do any tape tracking, you don't want to imprint, and if you rush it, you end up pushing tape in to the clear and it'll imprint, or worst case scenario, if it's still too soft underneath and it feels dry, when you run your squeegee on it, you can dig into the paint and scratch right. the flake. Take your time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we've already got one side already set on. This is, this is what we're going to do here pretty much with a nice 70s look logo. Yep. That's why we wanted this chorus effect to it, so it really gets that bling factor to it. And then we're going to candy over, which will pick up a lot of that really cool metallic in it. So we've already set this side, as you can see right here, and for the magic camera, we've got the other side set up. I'm going to apply this side here. Measured out, set yep. up, centered up to go, and Scott, I'll show you what he did for the next part. Yeah, so basically I've got it all measured out here, got a center line drawn, you know, checked all my sides, made sure it was all, you know, centered in the middle. You know, be careful when you're working on the regular objects like snowboards or bike tanks. Don't take edges as literal left and right, because sometimes center isn't center. You want to start there and then kind of adjust by the shape. Because when I do motorcycle tanks and cars, it's not always centered down the middle. You've got to visually center it. So you get it in place, make sure everything's in line. And always check your, check your corners as well, too, before you've totally set it down. But I mean, yeah. it's usually an eyeball thing, so you want to pay attention to exactly yeah. where it sits. So step back, take a look. Right. You know, sometimes you know, I, go. I call it visual center. Right. <laughs> visual centers is what we like to do, right? So right. then we covered this in another video as well. So Yeah, we didn't go too much into this, but 
on other videos, on my um, plotter videos in our classes, we go over how to design and do all the intricate work like this. And we'll cover a little bit more of it um, on future ones and some, some other videos. So let's set this thing on and get moving forward. All right, so what I use, when I apply a piece of vinyl, I do what's called the hinge technique. So everything's measured. I tape my sides, keep it from shifting. I run a piece of tape down the middle, and this is the hinge point. And on the anchor, I'm just going to hold He's going to anchor it. <laughs> so the transfer tape's already applied to our design. And I like to roll back kind of slowly, kind of almost like a book, opening a book. I don't want to like fold it. I don't want to pull it too hard. I want to roll it back to make sure that the gold mask is staying to the transfer tape and the backing's coming off clean. And if anything does try to pull off, I can go back in and just make sure it's transferring right. So what he's saying is basically take your time. Yeah. And we also left the logos inside here because it's kind of an intricate design as well. So but we did pre-weed a lot of the graphics out as well, but then we also left the logos inside what we so did we can here. So we, here. Can, so, we can, uh, so we can save it and make sure that logo stays down. Right. So what I do is after I pull it back, I pull this one out. Take a squeegee. And you work it forward, letting the air go out as you're laying it down. This is you know, incredibly important on curved surfaces. Sometimes you may need to do a relief cut here or there in case you get wrinkles. But by doing this, you can slowly work it in. Get it on. One side's down, nice and good. Unhinge. Unhinge, take the middle off. I've seen guys you know, make that mistake and they leave the tape and then right. you get a piece of backing stuck. Make sure you remove all your tape at this point. Same thing, we're gonna roll this back. Looks cool. Make sure it's down nice. And we're gonna remove the transfer tape. You know, the big benefit to the gold mask here and the advantage of using a plotter with you know, freehand taping is you get no edge. We're not putting any cut marks into the silver. And the it less, just makes it a lot cleaner of a paint The job. less cutter we do, the better this is going to come out. So once we get this laid down, we'll start applying some tape to finish off our graphic with the new La Rouge. La Rouge. La Rouge. We use that tape to, fit, to finish out the graphics in the middle, and then we'll slap in our final piece at the end. And that's it. She's ready to rock and roll. We're going to come back and start doing all the fine line tape of La Rouge and go from there. Okay, so we're down to the final parts of weeding out our logos at the ends of our graphics. So I've already done the Createx Candy 2L. You can see right here. Another really cool product that you can do is the plastic razor blades. And thanks to Scott McKay. Yep, brought those in a while ago. Awesome. They won't scratch anything out, but I'm just going to go through and finish out these little pieces right here. And that's what's great about this stuff is that it's so thin that you're just not going to leave any edge around this. No, no, uh, no graphic edge to it. Right. Good to go. So Scott's going to do his side right now as well. And we move forward. You know, when you're cutting logos like this, the real benefit of this tape, like um, Rhino mentioned with the gold mask, it's so thin it leaves no edge. It also cuts very easily. So it's a lot less um, work on your blades. I usually recommend running around, on my, on my rolling, I'm running at about 40 grams of pressure as opposed to the regular vinyl type, running about 90 to 100 grams depending on your machine. So a lot less pressure. I usually slow my machine down a little bit uh, about half the speed of you know the factory setting and to get a nice nice clean cut so like i said i'm running about you know 40 grams of force in about eight to ten centimeters a second is how i'm running it so basically what you did is you took the vinyl and cut the speed and force in half yeah that's my starting point then i usually up and down from there so whatever you would normally do the older school vinyl with you know with the gold mask cut everything in half and then dial it up or down a few percentage points from there yes. um you know the other benefit to this stuff the gold mask is it's transparent, so if I'm laying these graphics over something else, I can still see through it. I can see the cuts, I can see everything and line it up. And because it's a paper type, it's easier to draw on and, and add and hand cut as you go from there. The exactly. Machine. So I'm just gonna grab these little pieces out. This is again why I like the plastic razor blades because if I was doing this with a you know, straight edge or you know, utility blade, I'd be digging into my base coat here. You'd be doing a lot of touch-ups. Yeah. <laughs> we want to avoid touch-ups. Yes. Work smarter, not harder. That's right. So see, you got nice clean cuts here. 
We'll get these graphics pulled out, get it all ready to rock and roll, and then we'll go to the candy. And... All right, now we get to the part where we go over the LaRouge tape. We've got our graphics laid down. We added in our own custom set of Dancing Skeletons. We did a little tape roll here and a pump sprayer. We'll show it to you along the way, and uh, we'll get that you know, 70s psychedelic feel through it. But what I really want to get to is the tape itself. We're going to do some bordering graphics. They're going to flow the graphics from the gold mask design into the, the fine line tape and get that nice kind of balance of freehand tape masking as well as applauded masking and marry the two together. So we're going to start by border striping it. We're going to use the LaRouge tape, and this is the vinyl tape. You know, but unlike a lot of tapes out there, um, it's very smooth. A lot of the vinyl tapes out there are almost draggy when you do it. This almost has like a buttery smoothness to it, so you don't bind your finger up. And it just has a really nice flow, very little drag. Uh, and what's important to remember with this, because it's so thin, you don't, want to, you don't need to put a lot of pressure to keep it straight. And you don't want to. You don't want to stretch it too much. You just want to let it flow through. A little bit of pressure. You can pull it back up and reposition. And just glide across. You know, the thin profile on this is the same profile as the gold mask. So when we're painting back and forth, we're going to have that same thickness, that same ridge, and it's just they're going to play off each other really well. Reposition. And when you come around corners like this, it actually flows really, really well around the corners, and I get no puckering, no wrinkles, even after it's sat for, you know, hours or even days. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to snap it off, and then I'm going to go to the 16th inch, and I'm going to play right off this graphic. I'm going to merge, merge these two. So I'm going from fine line tape to gold mask and back and just seeing what works. This is the fun part about tape. You know, I love plotting, I love the computers, but sometimes it's too rigid. Fine line tape, you still get to experiment and play and create and see what you came up with. Even on these long lines like this, low tension. If you make, if you pull too hard, because it's vinyl, even though this has very little memory, it's still, because it's so thin, will have memory, especially if you're in humid climates, or very warm days. If you overstretch it, you can come back a couple hours later, it may move a little bit on you. And a design that's this tight, moving a little bit, it's not great. So you just don't overstretch it. Like any new product, you just get used to it, adjust, and then, you realize how well it works. As we go through this design further and further, you'll see we'll start being able to really do tight turns, a really nice flow with it. And then as we paint, we're going to use very little film thickness. And the paint's going to lay out and do some really, really clean pulls. All right, we're here still laying out the tape. I got the basic design going, lay it this side. We got our border going on here. I'm going to duplicate this side, and then Rhino is going to show you how to make a pounce pattern and duplicate this flame design. And we're going to work back and forth and get this tape laid out and get ready for spraying. 
Okay, I've already freehand laid out this design right here, and I want it to symmetrically match the other side. So what we're going to do is what's called a pounce pattern. We've got our uh, auto mask, our masking paper right here, and it's very simple to do. Lumber crayon right here. What you want to do is make a, a perimeter match of it. So we just run our lumber crayon across it. Okay. And then we run it right through it. So what this is doing is making me a nice perimeter cut here. So I'll cut this out so it matches the other side. We'll take our pounce wheel, which is over here, make the pattern, flip it to the other side, and retape it back off. Okay, here we go. We got our pattern already done. We cut out our perimeter cut, and then we went on a piece of cardboard, which is almost essential for doing a pounce pattern because you want some kind of softness underneath your piece of paper so that it can make that impression with the pounce wheel. There are many different size pounce wheels. This is my favorite because it doesn't move around so much. And also a little trick that you want to do when you're pouncing, never push, always pull into yourself, make a nice pattern. And what's really cool about this is what you do is you've got to make sure that it's secure so it doesn't move around on you. Also, many different colors of chalk. There's blue, gray, and white. So depending on your base coat is what chalk you want to put down to see the impression. So I'm using gray over silver, which will show up pretty good. And just give it a couple pounce, a couple pats. Rub it right through the holes that you did. And then we'll be able to pull this off. And just like that, presto, there is the pattern on the other side. Look, little, little trick when you're doing chalk, dude. Make sure you get some of that excess chalk off because the tape won't stick to it. Another thing about vinyl too, especially when you're laying flames around curved surfaces, you want to release on the tension. Don't pull so hard with it because what's going to happen, it's going to retain its shape back when you walk away. So if you're going to lay out flames with vinyl especially, lay them out, tape them off, get them sprayed, pull it off. But the trick is to doing vinyl is to not to stretch the tape out so much. So, here we go. Just follow that pattern. And when you're laying out a pattern, you want to stick to one side or the other because that'll change the shape of the flame if you go inside and outside. So as you can see, I'm way out here, but I'm not stretching it. It's just laying right there, nice and smooth. That's what's great about this new La Rouge. So it's got a matte finish to it, so it glides a lot easier when you're laying out tape. Really like this stuff. So make sure your points are crossed over. Come in, we're gonna do a little 70s style, Craig Fraser kind of style, rabbit ears. He's the only person I know that Makes rabbit ears look good. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a 70s theme style to it. And uh, get this thing sprayed. Use your nail. Split that tape up, cross up your points, because we'll be cutting those out. We're gonna use this eighth inch tape as a tape stripe for the flame. So do that, cross it over. Do a little cutting, and we'll move on to Scott's side. So there you go. Okay, here's a little cut trick. What I do is always using a straight edge blade because you don't press as hard with a straight edge blade compared to an X-Acto knife. And what I'm gonna do is follow my bottom tape line out and follow that top tape line and cut the bottom piece out first. Okay. And then we're gonna take the top layer and just stick that razor blade right on there. Pull it out, pull it out. There's your tips. Easy, easy. Easy to do, as long as you follow the steps, very easy to pull off. So we'll do it one more time for you. Cut the bottom first, make sure you get the right side. So follow the bottom piece of tape using the top as a guide. Follow it out. Just stick it down, pull the top piece out. Good to go. Just like that. And that'll give me enough room for Scott to come in and do our uh, next piece of tape, 
with uh, what, what are you using next? Uh, we're going to go and use the micro tape next, which is really new to the market. Um, super small, super skinny. It's our crepe tape. Comes in 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. Super, super thin. Uh, it just adds an extra little bit of detail into the job. So we're going to kind of box stripe around all these graphics. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to finish this section here in 16th. I'm going to box stripe around that when I'm done with the micro tape. Okay, this is a little bit too big for the design we're going to do, but we want, we want to show you how cool this LaRouge tape is, how it conforms to corners and around surfaces and stuff like that. So we got our quarter inch border around the board because we want it to be nice and lined out smooth without guessing as it wraps a corner. But then we'll take our second piece of tape and just follow that out just on the edge. And look at how well it rolls over those corners. Okay, you can see how well it rolls around the corners here, but then we got this round surface here at this curve on the back of the snowboard, so you can also see how well it'll pull around that corner and just lay down really nice. And we gotta leave that top section open because we do have an open design up at the top. So we'll just kind of break it right there, and you can see how well that forms to that corner and the curve. All right, I want to finish up this design here and mirror it. I could go through and do a pouch pattern like Rhino did, but I'm just going to freehand it and kind of work with it and just use it as reference points. The nice thing about the tape is you can keep repositioning it until you get it right. All right, we're about wrapped up with the main part of the design. I want to introduce the micro tape into the design now. Varying tape sizes gets you a really cool design, and that's a real benefit to the micro tape. Now, the micro tape is not vinyl, it's paper. Really good for these long, straight lines, nice curves. You know, we're just going to kind of turn the corner. I'm going to branch off this design, and just kind of do an old school box stripe. I'm going to turn the corner, go back straight, I get to about here. I'm going to turn the corner. Something this thin, you wouldn't want it to be vinyl, just because it would it would pull apart a little too easily, and it would stretch. This will really keep it straight. We're going to connect flame to flame. Do the same thing on this side, and we're going to get ready for paint. All right, we're at the tail end of the design process now. We're going to backfill some of the graphics, counter mask. So I'm going to use the gold tape. You know, back in the day, I would use the auto mask, which works great, still works good. But the gold tape here is just as thin as the La Rouge, and it's the same as the gold mask. So everything works in conjunction with each other. Um, this sticks a lot better when you close up the gaps here. It doesn't tend to fold as much as, say, the auto mask did. And it's super transparent. You can see through it. You can draw on it, you can cut, cut it back, and you just end up getting a really nice clean edge. Low pressure, straight edge blade, and just pull it towards you. I'm gonna keep going around this. Hand it off to Rhino, he'll do the other side. We'll get this all back masked and get ready to spray. Okay, one really good thing about the gold tape going with the La Rouge, they're both about the same thickness. So you don't have to worry about cutting so heavily into it like you would with an auto mask, which is much thicker. So basically, these two products go hand in hand. So that way you don't have to cut so deep into your design. That way there's no cut marks in your base coats. So just like Scott says, 
pull into yourself. Another little trick too is never pull from the t point back. You want to take the tape and go from the thickest part of your design over to your thinnest part so you don't pull any tape up underneath. So a couple little tricks of the trade there. Slight pressure, just like Scott says, follow that tape line out. And sometimes what I like to do as well, I'll stop on where it is just to make sure we got each section down. So you pull, pull onto the point, make sure that tape stays down, and we're almost ready to bring this into the booth and spray it. All right, just finishing up this graphic. We're going to get in the booth and start spraying it. The big thing about this paint, the La Rouge, it's really set up for water-based paints, um, as opposed to other, paint, other tapes that weren't. Um, they would just work really well together. You're not going to get any bleed through. You're going to get really crisp lines and pulls. Between the gold mask and La Rouge tape, Everything's just going to work perfectly together. And that's what you want. I'm done. Those are look cool. Okay, we got everything taped off. We might want to emphasize that you want to check and make sure all your stuff is pushed down, your corners are good, and everything's ready to go before you spray it. But uh, I think we're ready to go. What do you we think, Scott? We're ready to go. Let's get this thing into base. Yeah. We're going to go to candy. Let's go. See you, in, see you in the shop. All right, we're in the booth ready to go. I took our existing core silver metallic that we originally did the base coat, added charcoal, uh, charcoal viola to it. That way it's a darker tint. And I'm going to give an overall pass to this. Not too heavy. I just want to get all the tape lines covered up so we get nice clean edges. We're going to go back through with some Mendez texture effects and add different, you know, just I want to get some texture in there so the candies have something to play off of. Right now, I just want to get a nice pass, lock everything in, and then we'll work it from there. We're going to suit up and get going. Okay, we got our base coat on, we uh, let it dry, now we're going to come in and start doing the airbrushing to it. We got our Mendez stencil out, we got our paint already in the gum, which is what, we, what we're using. We ended up using a Wicked, um, what do we use? We used the Wicked Detail Smoke Black, we added the 4030, the 4020 reducer, and we're going to move through this whole thing and go to town. So what we're going to do is darken the eyes, as you can see we got them pulled out in between, and then since the board's going to sit in this direction, we're going to start drop shadowing all of our bottom edges. We're going in with this to give it some texture, and then once we hit that, we're ready for some candy 2 0 Ready? Ready to go. Go! So all I'm doing on my side is I'm just drop shadowing all my bottom edges to make my graphics float. And we're always keeping in mind light source from top down. We teach that in our classes as well. Always top the, dead center. Always the best rule of thumb. I guess that's why they call it drop shadow. Right. You're smart. I'm wicked smart, kid. And we're using wicked, that's amazing. So what's cool about this stage as well, we want to make sure that we can cross over while it's masked off and see how we got these graphics kind of overlapping each other. I can just run it right through there and that, that drop shadow will continue through and make that bottom graphic pop out over the top. Exactly. So shadowing right now while it's all masked off is almost essential when you're doing this kind of paint job.
the key to a good graphic paint job is doing things in the right order. Thinking ahead. All right, we're finished up the drop shadow here. We're gonna go in with the Mendez stencil and just start adding texture. Rhino's already started. We're gonna balance the texture into the drop shadows and just keep working it. Kind of the reason why we're doing this too, it diffuses a little bit and we can let the underside candy stick out. We actually laid that candy too over the top and we'll be able to pop out some of that metallic color with it. Wrapping up the texture here. What kind of airbrush are you using there, Scott? Oh, we're using my Guardian Series Black Ops. Well, minus the skull, but... Oh, yeah, these are, these are my, <laughs> my personal ones, but these are the color combos we're going with, the blue and the gray with the texture, and the maroon and the gray with the texture. And I like uh, one you're holding, Rhino, because it's got the orange needle chuck. And, uh, and obviously you can see that Scott has retrofitted his back of his airbrush a little bit. So these don't come like this. They come stock just like a regular Eclipse CS does or the custom CS. You can get the color combination. And if you want to retrofit the back of it, that's on your dime. <laughs> so as you can see too as well, with using these, you can spray really light. But going through the stencil, one or two passes through there and check. Yep. Move it around, check. Go sit there and spray this till the stencil is so dark that you ruin the color underneath. We want this to pop out. We just want to give it a little bit of texture so it brings some life to the project. That way those candies have different colors to go off of because candies are transparent. So if we have darker grays and lighter grays and silvers, you gotta get multiple tones of the candy. Right. Okay, so we got our shadowing done. We got our Mendez stencil on there. We got a nice texture to it. We put a little drop shadow to all of our skulls and the skeletons and their eyes and the, and the, and the, the nose sockets. Yep, yeah, got it all darkened up and ready to go. So now what we're going to do is pick it apart for the candy side of it. So we're always going to go from our darkest candy to and work our candy. way to lightest. So what we're going to do is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Yep. And then the flames will depict the colors at the end of the skeleton. And we'll add a little tape thing, a little, a little, little fade maybe, yeah, something little, like that. And shadow the insides and make these guys look inset color candies, like they're inset, same thing here. So pretty much we're gonna pick out a bunch of tape right now and then we'll start candying. All right. So red, orange, yeah. yellow. Yeah, we're so gonna write this down. Red, orange, yellow, green, green, purple. Like a rainbow. Yeah. Well, you missed one. So red. Red. <laughs> red, orange, yellow, green, green, blue, purple. Okay, we got everything uh, unmasked as far as our skeletons go. We've kind of changed up the design a little bit. So we put uh, a roll of La Rouge tape. tape in each one of their hands up top. And they also have an FBS sprayer in the other hand, which is uh, pretty cool for doing that. I'm glad we thought of yes, that. that so good. I have red in the gun. He's got purple in the gun, so we're gonna go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Yep. What we're gonna do from there, when I spray my red here, I'm gonna come to the opposite side of my flame and fill in the backside, and then his color is gonna fill in my tips. Right, and so, then I'm gonna do the flip side on the other side here. We're gonna go purple to red, and then so, we'll add some color to the logos. And we're not gonna back mask all this stuff. We're gonna let the candy fly a little bit. The candy's gonna be really bright here. And we're going to mix different color candies and just blend over this and wash and just have a cool psychedelic Psychedelic, feel. man. All right. All right, let's get so, to work. So I'm going to use it. a shield as well. What I'm going to do is you can see, I'm going to take one of my shapes. This is the FH, uh, FH1. Yeah, FH1. I'm going to come in here and kind of block out where his hand is. And then I'm going to make sure that I get... Oh, look at that. Nice. So what we've done here is we've got the candy 2-0. Mix with boom, a little 40-20. What are we doing? About 10%. 
And then a little uh, 4012 reducer. Yep. Actually, no, we did 30%, so we get a really nice consistency because we don't want to bleed. We don't want to migrate. We want a nice, even coverage. So Rondo starting with the red. I'm going to go with the purple. And at this point, you can kind of see why we went darker around the outside because it's not showing up as much as it does on the silver. So we're really letting that silver pick out the candy, which is what the job's supposed to do anyway. It's a transparent color. We really want that silver to pop through. You know, and like all candies, the more you spray, the more it builds. So I got the purple here. I'll hit this two or three times and I'll get a nice dark purple. Then I'll wash over. And it creates that rounded radius effect without going to black and contaminating right. it. And then what we'll probably do too is run a little bit of shadow lines on the edge of our uh, rib cages, around the hands and stuff like that so we can pop them out a little bit. But I'm also going with my shield and I want this leg to stand out from this because this is going to go orange. This is going to go a lighter color. So if I cover that up just like that and spray down away from my shield, perfectly covered up, ready to go for the next color. The same thing here when I'm coming on this side, I can make sure we get this leg in. I don't want to get anything here. I'll cover that. You got to remember too that we also have a silver border around this too. So what we're spraying, when we pull this off, there's going to be a nice glowing silver pinstripe line, tape stripe line around this, so it's going to really pop it out even more. But the key to that is you got to get good coverage. You don't want to leave it too close to silver, or you're just not going to have enough contrast. So we'll build it and get that contrast we need. I'll follow behind you and get all the tape in. And I'm going to switch guns. Make sure you do your flames before you right. switch. And we clear this, that silver core flake we did from the very start will go through that candy and it'll really dance out in the sun. All right, we've gotten our candy purple here. Rado's got his candy red. I'm gonna take the Mendez texture effects and I'm gonna take the same candy. We're gonna blow it in the background, blow some texture. And when we unmask this, you will have different contrasting candy colors. Again, just to go over the mixture I'm doing here, we have the candy 2 -0 mixed with 30%, 40-30, and about 5 to 10% of the 4012 reducer, depending you know, how you want it to flow. So while he's doing that, you can see he's also gone in and, and the drop shot of the Candy 2.0 Createx logo, and their, their logo is pretty much blue, so we're going to use that as a drop shot. The same thing I did with the FBS logo. I went in with red and hit my drop shadow of the red, and now I cleaned, it, I cleaned the gun out and I'm switching over to orange and that'll be my next skeleton and also the FBS color as well. So since I'm over here at the edge, I'll start off with the logo and then work my way over. Now you can see how laying in that red candy gives it that three-dimensional look. While he's doing that, I'm switching over to blue. So that's done. And now we're going lighter. So now the colors around it shouldn't be so bad. Oop. Where's my shield? You know, by going to the right colors, you're not worried about contamination because we're going from purple to blue. Instead of going from like purple to yellow where you'd get a brown mud, you want to do a nice transition. You can see right up there in the hand area, I just washed over the whole hand and still hit the red, and it didn't change the red color up top. But with me, I'm going blue, so I'm going to use a shield here. Because that blue candy goes over that red, we're going to get too much purple, and I don't want that. It's kind of cool too, you know what we're doing? As you can see how it's fading from red to orange and it's going to go to yellow 
then green to purple, so the background is actually fading with our skeletons yep. in it's the gonna foreground. So technically, we're fading within a fade. And we're going to get that tie-dyed look. So then really quick, red, orange, yellow, clean out, move to the next color. Okay, this is what's great about FBS because they have these really cool sprayers. Uh, we want the candies to clean out in between because those will actually change the color in between. It's not unlike opaques, if we're going lighter, that's going to tint that color to a darker color. So we want to make sure it's totally clean. So it's a couple sprays. And this is what's great about this. It stays material and keeps your waist down. And there's a couple little quick sprays. Dump it in there and move on to the next color. Why don't you pass that over to me? I'll get mine done. So now we're moving on to yellow. You want to hand me the yellow? So moving on to the next color. See, my way is so much cooler because they fade in with each other. Don't right. forget about your blue on the candy 2 0 part. That's right. And this is green, so let me cover this. Yep. Actually, at this point, we can let these two overlap. I'm going bit. to actually do this for you. Here, teamwork. Top side. Hold it, ready? Bottom, Bottom. side. And then what I can do for you, I can just wash the whole thing out now. Yep. Now look at how the cool color popped out from there. You need the foot. 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 And then wash that with a little bit of green, and that, I'll, that makes it look really toxic. I'll do the same it. thing. I'm going to bring the green over this blue a little bit, and you almost get that almost like a teal. Okay, I'm going to wash a little bit of color in. The, get your green arm. Yep, green arm. Careful around the green to the red. You don't want brown. And you wash in. Don't forget about your outside edges. Yep. It's like dueling airbrushes right now. There's one of the shell. Dun 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 dun. dun. It's getting a really cool fade in the background. That's looking awesome. It's going to be a fun one. Don't forget about your uh, blue and the candy. That's King what I'm doing Duro. right now. All right, we're starting to finish up the candy here. What I want to stress is this is a truly all water-based paint job. Water-based candies, water-based face coat. This is a dye-based candy. It's not a pigmented candy. So it's, you're not going to get that modeling murky effect. That really rich translucent color is going to pop through. Whereas in the past, it was a little muddy. It wouldn't get that nice sparkle. Now it's going to pop through because of the dyes in this candy. Okay, now we went to the lightest color, which was my uh, tequila, yep. uh, which is um, the yellow side to it. Now I'm going from light to dark. We're going to add a little bit of shadows to this. So what I'm going to do is take the dirt track brown, give it a shake, and now I don't need to clean it out because I'm making the color darker. And I'm tinting it to the color to match this so I can hit my orange, my red, my yellow, and some of the green. Exactly. And you can actually come in with a little bit of purple with that side of exactly. it. Exactly. And then I need to clean our gun out. So I'll just do a little splash in there. Tint the color darker. Do we have? Just check it. Like Always yes, check your color job. before you spray it too. So, little side piece of uh, paper, uh, masking paper, whatever you have on the side. Check this before you ruin that. So here we go. Just gonna get that kind of come in and just like you would see the shadow parts. Flip up those rings and make them stand out. And what I did is I took the purple and blue, did the same thing, so I can hit the edges. So you can see now, with very little effort, we can make this thing look three-dimensional. You know, and the real magic is going to happen once we clear it. And all that candy is going to pop, all that coarse silver from the very beginning is going to come out. You know, at the same time, too, you can really pop in these uh, 
overlapping bones. You can see the shadow lines now pushing the leg bones back behind the bones that are uh, crossing over the top. And as we finish up a color, we just keep sporadically adding into the background, you know, switching the colors up a little bit, and that'll give it that more tie-dye look. So I got more reds and blues over, more blues and greens over here. He's got the reds and oranges. So I might come over here and we'll just do a little. All right, we got all the candy sprayed. Everything's laid up the way we want it. Now it's time to start unmasking. Use plastic blades so we don't scratch the paint. We're just going to slowly pick and remove and reveal the end result. Plastic blades work great because they won't scratch the surface. Um, you can either use that or just be very careful with your nail and just grab the edge and pull back with it. So just in case, be prepared to see some coolness. That's great. You'll notice there's no edge. Everything's really clean. I got a little bleed through right here. I can come back and just kind of blend that out or actually wipe it out. Once we're done, we're going to clear this and that'll be a wrap. All right, so what I'm doing for the final now, I mixed up some candy black into my purple. And I'm just going through with the shield. I'm just going to hit my crossovers, just add a little depth and dimension. Call this thing a day and get this thing into clear. All right, we got all the masks pulled off. We pulled off the La Rouge tape, the gold mask. Everything's looking clean. That stuff is great to work with because there's virtually no edge to it. Working with that Createx K20, that silver base. We get a couple coats of clear on this thing, and this snowboard's going to pop. Yeah, it's done. So, great project to work on you with it, Scott. Yeah. I'm Rhino. Scott McKay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.